Hey everybody, Pat B here again, um, <clears throat> ready to document tour four of four. I have two um, videos where this one's concerned. And um, this tour would have been the very end of January of 92 through till the middle of March of 92 probably first 10 days of 92. What happened was, this is a tour that I did with Maureen McGovern and Mel Torme. After that tour was done, I flew home uh, from LAX. I was home for a week, hopped another flight to Miami to get a medical and fitted for a tuxedo. And then I flew to Europe and I crossed over the Atlantic on my first cruise ship. It was the inaugural. The ship was built in the west on the west coast of France. And we sailed up to Southampton, England, and then seven days straight across the Atlantic from New York, or from Southampton, England to, to New York. So, and that was in March. That was the last couple of weeks of March we started that. So this would have been, yeah, this would have been very end of January and into um, all through February and the first 10 days to two weeks of March. So anyway, so it was like six, seven weeks. So here's this post, and I, again, this is to document this particular tour, and the, the, the next two installments <laughs> or stories will be about this tour. It was the, the most uh, high profile of all of them. And I remember, before I start, psych, I remember when I was finishing the Mills Brothers tour, the one I just previously spoke about, um, I remember asking the contractor, Joe Graydon, for... Um, he was going to have me go out on a Benny Goodman show, asked me to do that, a Benny Goodman show with, um, Buddy Greco, singer Buddy Greco and Peanuts Hucko, who was a clarinetist. And I asked him for a bit more money, I think like 50 bucks more a week or something. I figured this was my fourth tour. Why not ask for a bit of a raise? He turned me down. He said no. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go back to university then to finish my degree because I was partway through my bachelor's degree at the time. And I went and I registered for my courses to continue on and blah, blah, blah. And then in between Christmas and New Year's, I get a call asking if I wanted to do this six or seven week tour with Mel Torme and Marine McGovern. I said, absolutely. So I um, went and proceeded to unregister all my courses and towards the end of January, I was on my way back to LA again. And uh, so this is, uh, these next two stories will outline all that. So here it goes. My last USA Big Band tour was about seven weeks in duration. And the headliners were Maureen McGovern and Mel Torme. The tour was dubbed the Great American Songbook. And there were plenty of arrangements by, by names such as Billy May, Johnny Mandel, and Marty Page, who happens to be the father of uh, David Page one of the founders and, and main guys in the band Toto. Um, top composers and arrangers of their time. This tour again started in Los Angel in the Los Angeles area for about a week before hopping a plane to Phoenix for the next two dates after and then continuing on from there. The tour got off to a very rough start for me with crossing the border, significant horn damage, and a missed rehearsal, among other things. But I also got to meet John Entwistle from The Who and some of the cast of the old TV show Night Court. If you remember that show, which was all pretty cool, it would be way too much typing to fill all those happenings in on this page, so I won't bore you with all the details, but if we're ever in the same room together and you really want to know and have a few minutes, I'll be happy to tell you. You won't even have to worry about being in the same room with me because my next posting totally explains it. Anyway, the band was really happening, made up of many ex-Woody Herman, Maynard Ferguson, Buddy Rich, and Harry James band alumni, and was anchored by Mel Torme's rhythm section of Donny Osborne on drums, Jennifer Lightham on acoustic bass, and John Coliani on piano. For Maureen McGovern's set, Lee Musiker accompanied her on piano. I last saw Lee at the Jubilee Auditorium here in Calgary about seven or eight years ago playing with Tony Bennett. <laughs> And I remember that I was sitting on the first balcony and um, I think it was Tony Bennett's daughter opened up for him 
And then when he came out, his rhythm section came out and I saw the piano player walk out and immediately I looked and I went, that looks like Lee Musiker, who was Maureen McGovern's uh, pianist and musical director on this tour. And I thought, I can't really tell from here because we're pretty far away, but he sure looks familiar and it looks like him. So as Tony was introducing everybody in the rhythm section, it came out that, yeah, it was, it was Lee. And one other thing that Lee is known for in certain circles, and maybe a lot of you or some of you don't realize this. If you remember years ago, there was a series of recordings of Buddy Rich reaming out his band that was floating around um, kind of bootleg tapes. I'm sure a lot of you have heard those. Lee is responsible for starting that off and, and recording all those when he was on Buddy's band. So he's, uh, I don't know if how many people know that, but uh, but yeah, he and I had some good discussions about that on this tour and about all that. Because back then in 92, it's, it's kind of, those, those uh, recordings were going around a lot. So, you know, it was, uh, and he was the one that, uh, that started it all. So anyway, just a, you know, nice to know, not a need to know. On these tours, I learned a whole bunch of verses and main lyrics of these great American songbook standards. Backing up these world-class vocalists, Vic Damone on tour one, as you know, Donald Mills, the last surviving Mills brother at the time, and his son, John, tour three, and then McGovern and Torme tour four. If I can, I like to research the lyrics to these songs to better understand the story of why it was written and to have been there to hear them sung night after night for several weeks on these tours really helped. I had so much fun on this tour, well, and all the other tours too, and I did. And I will never forget how cool it was to be a part of this with musicians and artists of this caliber. It sure makes you grow up quickly just to be able to hold your own in scenarios like this. It was just what I needed. And then what I did was I posted a, a track here that was, um, it's, um, Mel Torme with Big Band doing just one of those things. And then it's a direct segue into Green Dolphin Street. And I remember it was the exact arrangement we played on the tour. And um, so that's another reason why I posted it. So um, I can't remember the name, what they were dubbing the Big Band's name as. But if you go on and, and put on Mel Torme, Green Dolphin Street, you'll see it. And it's the exact arrangement we did. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, find that other posting of this particular tour and I'm just going to continue on right from there. So I'll be right back with you here. <laughs> 